Welcome to the Growing in Grace podcast, where you can listen in on some casual conversation about the good news of Jesus without all of the inconsistent religious double talk. If you've ever struggled with feelings of hopelessness, guilt, and despair, or wondered if you're really right with God, it's time to discover the true freedom that comes with the gospel of unlimited and overflowing grace. Hey, it's the Growing in Grace podcast. I'm Joel Brzezinski, the Breeze Man, along with Mike Kapler, the Cap. Hey, we've been um, doing some celebrating around here. We had a really, really big party, and by that I mean I was in bed by nine. And <laughs> nothing, that's about typical for me, but um, just kidding about the party stuff. We're celebrating here on the podcast itself by talking about some of the things, some of the highlights that we've talked about here on the Growing in Grace podcast, some of the things that we feel have been impactful for the listeners, uh, some things that people have written to us about. And we get uh, one of the things I love is the emails that we get from people when they say something like, I, you know, I don't know how I could have gotten by without the podcast, you know, things like that. Or the podcast has been so meaningful and helpful to me. You know, that type of thing. It's not to brag on ourselves again, like we were talking about last week. None of this is is about ourselves. This is about the fact that we are able to communicate a message here on the podcast that helps people. It has helped us. It has helped us. And so we, in turn, are able to help other people with the things that we have come to know and understand regarding the gospel. And we just love doing that. We, you know, we, I, sometimes I feel like I was born to do this, N- not just the podcast, but to communicate the good news of the gospel to people. I, th- I, I just feel it's so important. And so uh, some of the things that we've talked about over the last 800 podcasts, that's kind of what we're talking about here, Cap. Yeah. You know, one of, one of my favorite letters, we've had so many, uh, but this one sticks out because I, I put it in uh, my book, Clash of the Covenants. And it's, it's a very beginning, I think, in the, uh, uh, the preface. Uh, the nutshell version is uh, the lady who wrote to us was explaining how she had kind of gone through some of the same, uh, jumping through the same hoops and over the same hurdles that most of us have gone through when it comes to religion. And she began listening to the podcast as she was working around her house, cleaning things and whatever. I think it was by the third podcast, she found herself crying in her dish towel (laughs) Mm -hmm. because she came to realize that she was the righteousness of God in Christ already without having to work for it. And that's kind of what we started out with last week as we revisit some of our our favorite so-called topics or discussions that we've had. Uh, over the past 800 programs. And last week we talked about righteousness and uh, Joel finished with uh, the exchange that took place where God exchanged his life for ours, <laughs> our our dead life uh, for his eternal life. Um, doesn't sound like a fair trade, does it? But that's grace. And this righteousness thing that we were talking about, you know, th- this is such a big thing because everything revolved around this. The goal, the desire, the, the end game for the human race was to be acceptable to God, to, to uh, attain to righteousness. Well, the Jews did that. They pursued righteousness, but they did it through their own works, not by faith. They were trying to do it through the works of the law. Everybody fell short, and yet we Gentiles who had no covenant with God were invited into something brand new where this exchange would take place. Uh, we weren't even pursuing righteousness, and yet we attained it. The Jews were pursuing it and did not attain it through the works of the law. So uh, this is a big deal, uh, and that's kind of what we started out with last week. And and there are so many other uh, things that we've talked about over the years that we we at least want to touch on briefly, and we may spend more time on, on some than on others. Yeah, yeah. I think we'll skip around on some different things. Uh, the one, one of the things that came to mind when you were saying that is this, this uh, about the grace. It's all about the grace of God. And we, a few years ago, were a small part of a of a book by somebody who was kind of down on this idea of hyper grace. You know, we we were accused, I'm putting that in my own words, but um, the part that we played in in this book was that, are we running from the words of Jesus? So it's like the, um, it's kind of an accusation there that, that we are ignoring and running from the words of Jesus. And that's because part of what we do on this podcast is we have shared about how things like the Sermon on the Mount, things like when Jesus was talking 
to uh, Jews in certain contexts, a lot of times in the church, people think of that as, well, this is Christian teaching. It's Jesus talking, and so it must be for us because Jesus is our Messiah. Jesus is the Savior, and so if Jesus is talking, we better listen to him. So we've done some series over the years on the podcast about the words of Jesus. And one of the things that we talked about, that why we were accused of running from the words of Jesus, is that on the podcast we have talked about how Jesus sometimes is giving the law. He had a law ministry for the people who were under the law. Jesus was a Jew, born of a, born of a woman, born under the law to redeem those under the law, Galatians says. And so he had a ministry where he said, I've not come except for the the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And so much of his ministry, not all of it, much of his earthly ministry was teaching the law because the Pharisees had kind of distorted the law and they had added their own laws and traditions to it. And Jesus came to set them straight and to set the people straight on, on the true law, because what the law is, the law of Moses, it's a tutor, it's a schoolmaster that's meant to point the people who are under it to faith. And it's the, the law, as we've talked about on the podcast many times, is the ministry of death and condemnation. Romans 3.19 says that the purpose of the law was to shut mouths. It was to shut people's mouths and make them guilty before God. And so one thing that the Pharisees had done is they had made all these rules and traditions that kind of watered down the law or added to the law and Jesus came so that the people would understand what the law really said, and therefore their mouths would be shut, and they would realize they are guilty before God. The Sermon on the Mount is a great example of that. If you read the Sermon on the Mount and try to make a, a Christian teaching out of it, you're really missing the point. It was a Jewish teaching. It was Jesus teaching the law to those who were under the law, and what it was meant to do is shut mouths and point people to something other than self-righteousness, something other than them justifying themselves by their works. And that, of course, is faith. Jesus' ultimate purpose was to lead people to the gospel. But the law was the thing, was the tool that led the Jews to the gospel, to faith. First realizing that by their own works they're guilty, and then realizing that the only way that they could be made righteous is by faith. So I really like the the different things that we've done. We did a, a series, if you want to go back to starting with a podcast number 544, we did a series called Why Jesus Taught Two Covenants. It was a 20-part series that really hits on a lot of what I've just said, and uh, we've done a, a lot of other talking. Uh, the, the Non-Christian Teachings of Jesus, that was podcast number 444. Uh, so if anyone wants to look up, that up on the Growing in Grace website, uh, you're welcome to do that. You know, it, it, this is one of those things that totally changed our perspective of a traditional mindset of what Christianity was and what Jesus said and all of that. It, it just changed everything. When we were first exposed to this um, back in the 1990s, the idea that Jesus wasn't giving a Christian sermon, um, it changed everything. And I, I've told this story before. But uh, I'll just never forget it because uh, the day that the, the pastor was teaching this uh, here at a local church, my wife came home, gave me the cassette tape and said, this changes everything we believe. And it's true. And I, I think, Joel, I, I could go back and with you and, and do more podcasts on this particular subject of Jesus and the red letters and his words, uh, mm -hmm. who were they for? We could start all over again as if we haven't done any of those. And the neat thing about it would be we would be able to pluck out or siphon out more information, more perspective, more revelation, more understanding. That's just the way this thing works. Yeah. The Spirit is constantly teaching us, isn't he? Um, and so, yeah, the, the idea that Jesus wasn't always speaking to us, that the new covenant did not begin at the New Testament page in the Bible, that's a big thing. Jesus was operating as a ministry under the law, under the old covenant, not the new. And so much of what he had to say was targeting Jewish people who were at that time under the law before the law came to an end after the cross where the new covenant began, after the death of Jesus. So that's a big thing. And the Sermon on the Mount is a big part of that. In fact, it's, it's such a big thing. That's really what inspired uh, the book Clash of the Covenants. The Sermon on the Mount is, is sort of the, the centerpiece of, of that book. 
Yeah, and and that's one thing too that I had written down that I wanted to mention here too is your book. But you were just talking about Clash of the Covenants. Uh, maybe I'll have you you know talk more about that because it's it's something that like you said it came from this podcast. It came from all this talk about the Sermon on the Mount, and, and it came from all that uh, because you wanted to communicate. You you started out not really trying to write a book, <laughs> and you wanted to communicate just a little bit about the Sermon on the Mount, and then eventually more and more ideas, more thoughts came to your mind, and, and it turned into a book. I'm giving a really brief thing. Maybe you, if you want to talk more about that, you could. Well, quickly, um, yeah, I, I, and I put it in the book that I was writing down notes for a podcast that we were going to do on the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, we've done it before, and we were going to do it again, and I was just trying to get my thoughts together on it because I, I knew we needed to take this to the next level on the podcast, and so because I don't usually write notes down and, and prepare uh, like I'm doing a, a church sermon or something like that, but on this one, I wanted to make sure we weren't going to, that we were going to pull out everything that we could get out of it, and so yeah, it, it just grew from there, and then it became uh, quite a, a bit of a task to, to get the book written, but that that's where it all started. Uh, it was just going to be a, a mini book on the Sermon on the Mount, and then I got to thinking about it, and I thought, you know, if for people to understand this, it might help them to understand a little bit more about the law in general that came through Moses and, and how that worked for the Jewish people, which we Gentiles were never a part of. And so, you know, the Sermon on the Mount chapters kind of got pushed more toward the middle of the book. So there's, there's, uh, it's, you know, kind of divided up into three sections there, the law and leading up to the Sermon on the Mount, and then the Sermon on the Mount and some of the teachings of Jesus, and then, you know, more about things with our life in the New Covenant after that. So what's neat about this, though, is, uh, you know, the, the book Clash of the Covenants, we've spent no money to, uh, and maybe we should have, but we didn't advertise it. We didn't get a publicist to put it out there. And the funny thing about it, Joel, is that the number of books that are being sold, uh, we're not breaking any records, right? But um, the number of books being sold, like in the first six months, the first 12 months, the first year that it was out, uh, about the same number of books are being sold now, several years later, during the course of a given month than, than there were back at that time. And that's because people are finding out about it, usually through somebody else or through some avenue on social media or whatever. They're finding out about the book and then they, um, they read it and they're so, uh, you know, taken in by it that they, they feel uh, it's necessary to, to buy more copies for other people. You know, that's just the way the gospel works. You want it, you want other people to come to a greater understanding of it. Right. And so that's, what's going on out there is there's this domino effect that's taking place. I had somebody message me recently out in California who asked if I could get on a, you know, some sort of a, a, a zoom call or something because his church group was meeting at his house each week to go through the book. And so um, I'm just thankful we've had this platform to be able to get this message out there and, and help bring peace and, and grace and life to people. Right. Yeah. And so there's a link on each podcast episode at growinggrace.org. There's a link for the book. It's called Clash of the Covenants, Escaping Religious Bondage Through the Grace Guarantee. So check that out on, on Amazon is where you can get that book in, in paperback version or, or, of course, you can get the Kindle version. So we'll uh, continue sharing some of the highlights and some of our thoughts about the last uh, 800 podcasts that we've done here on Growing in Grace as uh, time goes on here next week on the Growing in Grace podcast. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski, heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. Access past programs by visiting growingingrace.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace. Growing in Grace.